Hello, and welcome to another episode of Highlights from the Hill, the original HCAM Ed series designed to bring you inside the Hopkinton Public School Systems. I'm your co-host, Jim Cousins, along with Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, who is our host. Welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be back. Um, I have brought with me today Tim Parson, who is our Director of Buildings and Grounds. Um, I find that sometimes people think that the Hopkinton Public Schools just continue on and they don't realize how much work is done behind the scenes. So yeah. I thought it might be important to bring Tim. Excellent. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so how long have you been with us in Hopkinton now? So I'm coming up on my second year. Um, I started you know, just a little over a year ago in June, it took over for Al Rogers, um, who was here for, I think, around 18 years. So I had some pretty big shoes to fill, and um, I've enjoyed it so far. So as you entered the Hopkinton Public Schools, what were some of the things that you sort of saw right away as things you wanted to work on? So I think just um, overall um, getting the buildings in better shape, buildings and grounds. So, um, uh, we took a look at some of our programs that we were running in order to help uh, maintain the schools. We run the School Dude program, which is a very excellent, crazy name, but excellent mm -hmm. program that um, helps us get all of our building equipment um, into one place so we can monitor it and see how we're doing maintenance-wise on it and whether we'll need to replace things coming up or just continue to do repairs on them. Mm -hmm. So it's been an interesting, interesting product to use. I'm new to it myself, uh, but really intuitive and, and easy for not only myself, but the maintenance staff to use as well. I see. So does it track how many times a certain particular thing has been requested to be repaired? So we kind of track it. So okay. you as a user mm -hmm. in the school would, uh, would place a ticket in. That's what we call a ticket. Um, and then it goes through the maintenance supervisor. He would assign the ticket to the appropriate uh, maintenance person in each location. And then we would track the product through that. You know, so if it was a, and I'll use a simple thing like a sink, if we're noticing that we're, we're making repairs on a faucet or a, you know, a drain too many times, it mm -hmm. might be time just to replace that or if we're spending too many hours doing it. So oh, it's, it's, it's really a great tool yeah. to help track the work um, that we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have five buildings as well as the White House. Yes. For lack of a better name for that, <laughs> that structure. Uh, so how is it? How many people do you have actually working for you that take care of all of that? I mean, there must be like thousands and thousands of square feet, <laughs> right? So, uh, yeah, the schools are about, uh, give or take, uh, 600,000 square feet. Wow. And Huge. just over 120 plus acres of property. Um, you know, a lot of that consists of about 15, uh, 15 sports fields that we use, um, including the Elmwood um, play fields and the New Marathon uh, School play field. Um, but the sports fields are really, you know, uh, a sense of pride, I think, for us in the school and for the town. So we spend a lot of time making mm -hmm. sure that those are um, pl look good but playable and safe is, is really our, our goal to make sure our student athletes are all um, you know, safe mm. and then hopefully come out in the same way they went in. You know? <laughs> and are you responsible for everything, like top to bottom, spring to winter? Like all top to bottom, stuff? spring to winter. Mm. Um, in the winter time, the, DP, uh, the town's DPW does the, uh, the loop road plowing, mm -hmm. but we take care of all the sidewalks and kind of ancillary areas to make sure that the schools are safe to be open oh, I see. during snow. Um, but they're a great, you know, they're a great asset for us um, to help us make sure that we're opening our schools on time and, you know, hopefully with no delay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. And I bet, you know, there are people who are probably wondering how we make that decision about whether to open school or not to open school and um, as Tim said we work very closely with the highway department mm -hmm. and you know I am constantly on the phone with Tim maybe with Chief Lee sometimes Chief Slayman yeah. the highway department mm -hmm. and all of those conversations are taking place behind the scenes um, there's also sort of a network of superintendents that pitch in and, and talk to each other about what they're doing on a mm -hmm. particular day Although very recently, we just had a day that was an anomaly for us. Mm. And I don't know if, Tim, you want to talk about that a little <laughs> bit. But we did um, not have power and hence not have school. So, yeah, so um, I'm sure the town knows we had a power outage. Uh, it's probably a couple weeks ago now. 
um, down on Ash Street. Uh, it was a big windstorm over the weekend or very early. Um, so this one was, you have anomalies in everything you do. So this one was a little strange for us. I had received a phone call probably around 4.30 in the morning um, that a tree had gone down on Ash Street and we had lost power to uh, the high school, middle school, and Hopkins School on Hayden Row. Um, Elmwood School and Marathon School were both okay through it, but um, it prompts a series of phone calls that we then make. So my first phone call is to Dr. Kavanaugh to, you know, assess what we're going to do, you know. Um, and you're, you're going based on very little information in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know. So, so as, um, as I make my phone call to Dr. Kavanaugh, she is now taking that ball and running and making several other phone calls to Chief Lee, to uh, DPW, um, to, you know, uh, you could probably Chief explain, to your Chief <laughs> Slayman, um, just to see where we are. Um, and then I'm on the other side making phone calls to National Grid or Eversource and, and um, you know, seeing, you know, when we think we're going to start. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot, and being a parent myself, I think you always go, I don't understand why they can't just call school. Mm -hmm. Being on this side of it, I understand now how much more goes into it. Right. You know, there's, uh, there's really a lot of phone calls and a, and a lot of um, issues that you have to work through to make sure you're, you're making the right call. Right. Do you have like a hotline into the National Grid where they, it's like a red <laughs> phone and they pick it up? And no, they treat me just like everybody else. So I go, I go in the queue and on the waiting list. Um, if it's really bad, Chief uh, Slamin is really the hotline guy. Okay. He, has the, he has the ins and, you know, so where I may get uh, um, a little uh, misinformation, he can help correct that, you know. Yeah. So even before we make that call, you know, um, for whatever time they say we think power is going to be restored by then, I will relay that information to Dr. Kavanaugh, who will then, you know, <laughs> prompt several other phone calls, and we'll figure out from there how we're gonna how mm -hmm. we're gonna go. This one, unfortunately, we we couldn't get it done just I think outside of our our call time, but but um, you know it's really a great collaboration with mm. with all these departments to help us make the right decision. So you just mentioned it's so interesting that you have kind of a network of superintendents. So I, so I have a question: Do you sleep at night, <laughs> like when you know there's a storm coming? Well, see, that's when there's a storm coming. The answer to that is probably no, <laughs> right? I mean, you start getting up at least around three o'clock, and mm -hmm. you're assessing what's going on outside your own windows, and then yeah. you're in communication with other people in other districts, and of course, emergency personnel and all that. But the morning that uh, Mr. Person called me about the power outage, no one could see that coming. Right. You know? So that there were even teachers in the district who said that they didn't really respond to it because they thought it was a hoax. It, no it, kidding. It, there was a lot of disbelief around that one. <laughs> oh. Yes. Wow. Do you have a network, like when bad weather is coming? So I, I do, and it's much the same network, but mm -hmm. probably just on a less administrative level and more on a, you know, boots on the ground level, you know. So yeah. I'm, I'm in contact with, you know, the Mike Manzers and his group and uh, my group, Don Freiberg, and, the, and my facility staff mm -hmm. just to uh, assess where we are and where we think we'll be um, by the time school starts, mm. you know, by the time we think school can start. Yeah, yeah. And who are the people who are like driving around town seeing what the conditions are like? Is it the police? Is it the fire? Like, or are you just going on reports coming in how the weather is going and the conditions that are passing through? It can be the police, but sometimes you're in town too. Yep. I mean, he doesn't live in Hopkinton, but we'll be here yeah. Yeah, all if night. We, yeah. if, we, if we know a storm's coming or um, we think that there's a possibility for delay, we try to get here early. Mm -hmm. um, we really run on the DPW schedule. So mm -hmm. the DPW, um, you know, deploys their crew. They help, they call us, say, hey, just so you guys know, we're deploying, which kind of puts us in action as well. So mm. we, we work really hand in hand with the DPW. And I guess I'm talking more snow event than, yeah. than um, you know, any other anomalies in town. But uh, for snow events, we're really working hand in hand with those guys. So yeah, we have a great, you know, this town really has a great network mm -hmm. of people and great resources that are more than willing to let us reach out to them and um, and they'll give us advice and and um, I think what you know what we do is um, the town is so big that we can be up at the schools and it looks great up here the roads are down to bare pavement and yeah. 
but you get kind of closer to 495, and it's a different situation out there. And, and Mike really, Mike Manzer from the DPW really does a good job informing us um, mm -hmm. kind of where we are town-wide, yep. where we may be focused a little, uh, a little bit more just on the school areas. Yeah. I don't know what's magical about 495, but it just like <laughs> throws everything in a spin. It know? really does. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It does. Yeah. And as we're thinking about things too, you know, people very often will look just at the roads, but what they don't think about is snow on branches, branches that mm -hmm. could take down power lines, yeah. just clear sidewalks, because we have a lot of children who walk. Right. So, yeah, there are a lot of pieces that go into the snow day. They yeah. sure are. Um, but I would also like to have us think more about the collaboration that you do in town. I mean, mm -hmm. we right now have an ice rink sitting in front of our middle school, which mm -hmm. is a wonderful thing for our <laughs> community, but that didn't just magically appear, so. Yeah, so Parks and Rec, um, Jay Golfie had reached out to us uh, probably a month ago um, and asked if we could hold the ice rink back on the basketball courts. Um, I think it was there prior to, to, to my tenure here. Um, and we thought it was a great idea. We think it's a great thing for the community to be able to use our schools and grounds in these ways. And, um, and so Jay uh, really got the ball rolling. And again, you know, and I feel like I'm, I'm beating a horse here a little bit, but it's really with a lot of collaboration, you know. So um, I reach out to my side and the administration and say, hey, this, this idea is presented. You know, what do you guys think? And we go through the pros and cons. This one was an easy one. There was, you know, way more pros than there were cons. Um, and then on Jay's side, or the Parks and Rec side, they're, um, they're really collaborating with the DPW and the fire department. The fire department helps us fill the, you know, fill the rink yep. initially, and then they're maintaining, uh, Parks and Rec is maintaining the ice throughout the year, and, and we just think it's kind of a great thing to, uh, to have up at the schools. Huh. Did they have like a mini Zamboni or something like I, that? You know, it was, uh, there was a gentleman doing maintenance up there as I was coming down, and I with didn't have hose. a chance to. Right? With yeah. the hose. He had the hose out, <laughs> and, uh, and he said he has something that scrapes the ice. I asked about a Zamboni. He didn't, uh, he didn't give that information up. Yeah. But apparently last night there was, uh, I think last night was the first night it was open mm. for use, um, and they had uh, quite a little hockey game going on there. Yeah. The, nice. the students that were there all said they had done their homework prior to, so <laughs> yeah. we were good. Well, that was quite a relief. <laughs> <laughs> what about all your equipment? Where does all your equipment still, like all your lawn mowers and the sidewalk clearers or all that stuff? Where do we keep it? Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting. It's, a, it's in a lot of places. So, oh, yeah. so we find, you know, we want to protect our equipment. So we try to find kind of any nook and cranny we can to, to uh, place these pieces of equipment. We do a lot of rotating, obviously, in the winter and the summer months. And, mm -hmm. And um, but right now we have a you know some stored at the doghouse by field three, some up in the middle school, some across the street in a in a garage that we we have over there. Um, it's everywhere. I don't want to say it's everywhere because we're we're kind of organized with it. You yeah. know we know where everything is. We it's everywhere. Know, we have, it's just not scattered. It's just yes. <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so we have a lot of new. We have a new turf field, a new elementary school. How is the new going? The new is, is really good. Well, it's, yes, I'm not going to say well. It's really good. You know, I think with, and I'll use the Marathon School to start, you know. So the Marathon School was, a, it continues to be, but was a great project. And it was a really good project for me to come into the system with. Um, they were already, I think we probably had just about a year and a half of construction left. So I... I got to help make some decisions as regarding the interior of the building and, and, and processes and stuff that we would put in place to make sure that it ran smooth for the, you know, the hundred years we hope to have the building. Mm. Um, but it's really, uh, it's really a cool building. You know, it has a lot of innovation in it as far as building management systems and lighting controls and, and um, you know, just kind of state-of-the-art equipment in there um, to help keep it running smoothly and efficiently. Um, along those ways, as always, you know, we're working out a little bit of the bugs that are there now. But I think you find that with anything new, especially being such a complex project. So it's really a great building. I think the students and the teachers are enjoying it. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's a good spot. You know, they picked a great location. Mm -hmm. um, we did pick up a, a little more um, outdoor work than we had at the center school. I think we boast to have about a mile of new sidewalk down there. Wow. Um, 
a great couple of playgrounds, the, um, the pre-K playground and then the, you know, the, the regular playground and then a nice big kind of outdoor open turf space for them to play in in the, in yeah. the spring and summer. Is the pre-K one the one in front? Yes. That's a cool playground. It, it really is. You know, yeah. we've all tried the tunnel. <laughs> You by the end of the winter, <laughs> <laughs> by the end of the winter, I making may not sure fit safe. through it again. But uh, yes, we were making sure it was safe. Yeah, it was. It, but so it was really a great project and really great again collaboration between. Um, you know, we had town people. Mm -hmm. You know, um, who worked on it, and we continue to do monthly meetings to to make sure that the building is staying in good shape mm -hmm. and running through the rest of the process of closing the project out. And, um, you know, again, the, the staff and the students down there make it make it kind of a wonderful place. Yeah. yeah. And Turf Fields? I mean, that's Turf exciting Fields for the is, town is very exciting. You know, it was I think it was kind of a long time coming for us um, where we're excited about, you know, kind of the flexibility we're going to have on these fields. And um, and uh, with all the different sports we'll be able to play. And uh, the col again, I'm using collaboration a lot, but it's really kind of what I think we have tried to bring into the school system, both of us being, well, relatively new for me and new to your role. Um, uh, we, we teamed up with uh, Parks and Recs on that as well, and we'll be able to use the fields much more than just high school sports. Um, but it was an interesting project. It was, um, you know, we took it through construction, uh, all the kind of nooks and crannies you find out about your property while you're there. Um, <laughs> and, but we worked through them. We had a, another great construction crew. We did a, a, a really good job selection wise with those guys. And, um, and we're kind of running through the rest of that now. I think the only thing we have left down there is scoreboards. We still have to hang scoreboards. We were just waiting for the, uh, the regular ground to firm up a little bit before we bring in the big trucks. Mm -hmm. So. Really a great project. I think the, I think everybody's going to enjoy using it. I think people are now. I think mm -hmm. I, whenever I drive by, there's always somebody out there. Yeah. Um, I would ask if anybody out there is listening to please no pets on the on the turf, no golfing. <laughs> we'll have signs that go up, but um, you know we want to keep these fields in good shape for yes. years to come. You know. Yeah. yeah. So do you have any other big projects on the horizon? I mean, now that you have <laughs> all this free time with, <laughs> with Marathon Open and the turf field up. Yeah. So I, um, hopefully, yes. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're in budget process now. We have, we put capital plans forward um, just to help um, start to get the schools in better working order. Um, so as we go through our, th through our budget season, we'll, we'll find out what some of those projects may be. Um, I think two interesting projects and you could probably speak to one of them better than I can but is uh, you know the Elmwood school is uh, maybe our next school to um, come up under review um, for you know rehabilitation or or a new school I, I would do it injustice if I spoke to all the reasons why it would need that but um, and the White House would be another uh, White House again as we as we started the conversation with is another project that I think if anybody had driven by they could see that the building might be a little tired at this point and, mm -hmm. and need and in need of some rehabilitation so those is, are two bigger projects that I could see yeah is that is that White House being used for anything at the current time we do uh, so facilities is there on the second floor uh, myself uh, Lou Sanborn my admin and Janet Kyle who does our facilities use and then on the first floor is our um, student services group so it's like all offices, all admin. Yeah, it's, yeah, and also our um, our our uh, bus liaison is on the first floor. Yes. Oh, yep. I see. Yeah. So yeah, it's quite an interesting building. It's been around. I hear a lot of history about it when I when I talk to people in town. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, uh, the gentleman with the hose on the ice yeah. uh, said he remembered being in that building 50 years ago. Wow. And um, it was one big open space at that point, and I think the baseball and football fields were where the middle school is, and that's you know that stuff is just amazing. It's like mm -hmm. fascinating how <laughs> things used to be. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think you've we you we've grown as a town. And, yeah. Um, from what I could tell, and from the stories that I hear, mm. uh, a lot of passion in this town. Though. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, it's really a good spot. Yeah. What do you think is um, 
one of the more challenging aspects or aspects of your work? So I think it's um, I think it's trying to do everything. You know, there's um, we have buildings. You know, uh, minus the center school now, but we have buildings that were built in the you know 50s and 60s and 70s, even up to you know the high school was the newest building at um, I believe 2001. Um, it's the challenges of the day to day stuff, trying to take care of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're working within your budgets and and um, you know, your goal is to make as many people happy as you can, you know, and uh, sometimes not everybody's happy, you know, uh, but it's, um, I would say that's probably the challenge is it's just the, um, you know, making sure that we have a, you know, a good sustainable district. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I would just sort of add to the challenge piece is, and you know, I'm not saying something we haven't been saying for the last you know year in the district, but the increasing enrollment. Mm. And when we file our statement of interest with the Mass School Building Authority for Elmwood, yep. and we are really hoping that that's going to work. And typically, what happens with those is they invite you in because you have increased enrollment, or they invite you in because you have. You know something with your your major systems in a building okay and I don't think that our issue is our major systems at Elmwood but certainly we have issues obviously with enrollment right and I think you know we can't just think about Elmwood although that's the one that's on the burner right now mm, right. right I think that as we look at our schools and kids progressing through them we are going to need to make some really serious yeah. decisions as a community yeah so you know Really quickly, I hear a lot about space in the high schools in a crunch and mm. space in the middle schools in a crunch. Is that through all of the buildings or all five or our, our like Hopkins? I hope Marathon is okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, for now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say that. But, you know, as we look at Elmwood, it's the one that MSBA would be considering next. But um, the high school administration will tell us that that building is at like 99% capacity mm -hmm. all day long, uh -huh. meaning that there are students and faculty inhabiting every room in that building all right. day long. Mm -hmm. um, so that is another one of the buildings where I think we have to start getting very serious about what are we going to do to ensure that we have more classroom space there. Yeah. Um, as we look at some of the classes in the middle school right now, grades six and grade eight are huge. Mm -hmm. and so the high school is only getting more and more students every day. Right. right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting because um, we keep saying that Elmwood has sort of a one-year reprieve because the kids who are coming into grade two, it's a smaller class. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think that the seventh grade is also a smaller class. So there's a little bit of wiggle mm. time there, but not a lot of wiggle time. Right. Yeah. So I'm interested. Um, so you worked in the private sector before you came here. Yes. Um, how is it working for like a public school system as compared to did you have like other kinds of, uh, I don't know, policies or, you know, state guidelines or mandates or how does your work different? I can tell you 100% it's completely different, mm -hmm. but not, not in such a bad way. Mm -hmm. The buildings and the grounds are the same, private to public. I think it's the, how you go about, you know, getting your budgets done and, and kind of the expectations may be a little different, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but it's... Um, I wouldn't even say it's a challenge. I think the challenge is to make sure you're, you're making the right moves. And I think we do that. We have a great team that kind of helped me along with that, you know. Um, and so it's just different. Mm. Not bad different. Right. Just different. In your role, do you get to, like, formalize the projects and prioritize them as you like and then present them to the administration? How does that work? We do that as a team. I think, you know, so we, we figure out what's, you know, what's important, what needs to happen. As far as bigger projects go, I think if it's, you know, if I'm fixing HVAC in buildings, I think we're just doing based on need, mm -hmm. you know, and um, again, I keep everybody involved with, with what we're doing, but I, they trust they trust me to be able to make those decisions. Right. Well. Yeah. Now, I don't remember, are you involved at all with looking at future uses for center school? Or is the school department not looking into that? I think that they had a center school reuse committee. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so that group, I think, was primarily responsible for that. Yeah. Um, but as a good committee will, they invited you know, input from all of us. And yeah. so I do recall going to meetings and making suggestions about you know, maybe an 18 to 22 program or some of those okay. other uses for the schools. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. Yeah. Well, we're just about out of time. We're wrapping things up now. Right. Um, I'm just curious, like, if you um, look back on the last year and a half, mm -hmm. what were some of the more either either interesting or fun, you know, projects or activities that you worked on? What did you really enjoy about working in the school system? So I think it was just that. I really got to come in during exciting time, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of people put a lot of legwork into getting that marathon school approved and the plans all made, and I got to kind of come in. And, and carried across the finish line. And, and <laughs> what a great position to be in, right? Yeah. And I, I believe the same thing with the turf fields, although I did from start to finish the construction on, on them. You know, the, the legwork was really done prior to me being here, or, you know, I came in on the tail end of the legwork yeah. right before the vote. So um there were two those two out of all the things i do were really kind of uh great projects to work on mm. um and y you know you couldn't ask for more excellent well hey thank you very much for being on the show and talking about I, your job i appreciate you guys having me yes thank you oh. <laughs> dr Kavanaugh. thanks yeah. for another good thank show you, Tim. Thank you. okay and i'd like to thank you for watching this episode and please come back again for our next highlights from the hill mm -hmm.